mistress of deception and All trickery. that remains is your you sacrifice. You are more powerful than he Humanity can has outstayed its welcome. The dead shall inherit the earth. Listen to the sound of my voice. Can you hear me? Who's there? I can't see you. My name is Dr. Salim. We've met before. Dr. Salim? Where am I? You have fallen between the world of the living and the dead. The void. I'm dead? I can't be dead. Deimos, I have to stop him. And you still can. I'll explain as we go. For now, you must trust me. Think back to coalescence. The start of your journey. The beginning. The beginning. It started at Coalescence Singapore in 2070, 10 years after the disaster, after virus 6115 began its spread, after the dead began to walk the earth. We'd lost comms with John Taylor's squad, another undead extermination team. Dead killers, we were called. With their cybernetic augmentations, we were impossible to infect. We were trained to terminate the undead. Hendrix was on edge. We were in a quarantine zone, one of many walled-off areas separating humanity from the undead, built to keep the virus and the infected behind their wall, away from the rest of us. The undead weren't our only concern. The 54 Immortals, a local combine who remained in the containment zone, were aware of Taylor's activity. This place was the epicenter of the epidemic. The 2060 coalescence disaster created the cursed world we lived in today. Any activity at this site would set off alarm bells. Either way, our troubles were only just beginning. We should have known that the ASP was on the dead. If we were going to bring it down, we'd need to disable his shield and find a rocket launcher. Hendrix had a bad feeling about this. He wasn't the only one. I knew we shouldn't be there.
coalescence. Enhance yourself for a better tomorrow. They'd been the forefront of technology, always wanting to improve the individual, the future of you. What happened? What went wrong? The coalescence disaster happened. Virus 6115 spread throughout Singapore and strains popped up all over the world. Governments built these quarantine zones to house the undead, a way for the populace to ignore what was happening. Ten years on, and it had worked. We put it out of mind. Ignorance was bliss. What was so special about this operation? It was supposed to be by the books. Five years after our cybernetic augmentations, Hendrix and I were a well-oiled machine. Quarantine sweeps, recon, search and rescue. It's just what dead killers do. But we'd never been sent after one of our own before. John Taylor's systems had gone quiet. With our direct neural interface, we're hardwired into Winslow Accord servers. Observation knew if you were dead or alive. For Taylor to be neither, that was unusual. We located an EMF source and uploaded it to Central. It was a 54 immortal audio log, detailing unusual activity coming from the server room at the lowest level of the building. It couldn't have been more than a week old, probably why Taylor's team had been sent to investigate. Hendrix activated a recon drone to scan for life. We picked up a signal coming from far below. As we stood there in the atrium, I felt like Alice and we were about to jump down the rabbit hole. Our drone picked up activity ahead. We should have known we weren't alone down here.
When man fled the virus, they left behind thousands of active robots. Machinery abandoned with one directive. Kill the dead. Years later, they're still killing. But with decrepit programming, somehow humans had been added to their kill list. Indistinguishable from our brainless counterparts. The strange behavior was observed in multiple quarantine zones. Another nuisance for us to deal with while on recon. We moved on. We reached the silo's floor, but the signal came from lower still, below coalescence. Did you have any inkling of what waited for you? No. In hindsight, we should have put it together. But the fact of the matter, that day was supposed to be like any other.
What did you find below Coalescence? A CIA black project. Project Corvus. Unknown to the world, and unknown to most people in the know. As off the record as it got. A redacted footnote in Langley's history book. Part of me wishes we just turn back. Why? It... Well, it would have been easier for me. For Hendrix. For the world. Is it such a bad thing? To want to be blissfully ignorant in the face of daunting adversity? We didn't have a choice. Those who find fate thrust upon them rarely do. Oh, <laughs> 